Mina, Ohio Gazimash, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Uh, obviously, the Sunday message has not been done yet. From last Sunday, I was what I'm referring to. It is still coming, doggone it. I don't care how. I know I did a bunch of Sunday messages, and I still owe one, though. I'm still one behind, and I'm going to catch up. I'm going to make it. And if I miss this Sunday, then I'll do two messages. I'll find something to speak about because I'm going to do what I should be doing, even if it's late. It's usually late when I do it, but it gets done, doggone it. So today, not a 30-minute message, but I just wanted to cover that since I hadn't covered it in the last few days, and I said maybe by Tuesday, and it didn't happen at all. Now it's uh, Saturday morning. Today we're going to look at Psalm 10, and this is, of course, Friday's video because I usually do one day... I usually do this at the end of my day, and the end of my day is usually the beginning of the next day. I have a weird schedule. So Psalm 10, verses 14 and 15. Now this is, very, this is it, we don't know who wrote this psalm, but it's still in the Word of God. It's still biblical, and it's an interesting verse. Or verses, I should say. Psalm 10, verses 14 and 15. But you have seen, for you observe trouble and grief, to repay it by your hand. The helpless commits himself to you. You are the helper of the fatherless. Break the arm of the wicked and the evil man. Seek out his wickedness until you find none. That is a strongly worded prayer. Now, obviously, just breaking the arms of people, I don't think anyone would take that literally. I don't think, I don't think anyone on the left or the right, Christian or non-Christian, would interpret that in a literal sense. Breaking people's arms is not going to stop wickedness, just like when Jesus said, pluck out your eye, um, cut off your hand, you know, if it will save you from hell. It won't save you from hell. Um, wickedness is in the heart of man. It's not in his hand, his arm, his eye, or as some Christians tend to believe, their crotch. That is not the source of all evil. The source of evil is the sinful heart of man. That's what needs to be made right. That is why repentance before Jesus is so incredibly important. That belief in him and his righteousness and turning away from your sin, repenting of your sin before him, trusting in his cross for your forgiveness, that results in salvation, that acknowledgement that we are sinners in need of a forgiving, loving God. But what about those who will not repent? What about those who continue to hurt others and continue in their wickedness? Sometimes it is appropriate to pray for judgment. I, I wouldn't say to pray for a specific harm, but for, but for you to pray for God to stop someone, if you know they're doing something wrong, and for you to pray, God, send down judgment. Let them hurt a little bit. Send the fire of your judgment. Send the fire of your wrath. Stop them from their evil. I do not think that is wrong, and I've prayed it often myself. And of course, obviously, I don't follow up with anything physical. I don't try to physically torment or hurt anybody, as I've said several times. And I'll continue to say, we serve a God who is a spirit. We, serve, we live in a kingdom that is a spiritual kingdom. We're not of this world. We don't, we don't exercise authority or, or judgment in the flesh. Now, if you're you know, a judge, a police officer in the military... Well, then you have been given physical authority to do physical harm. And again, I see nothing wrong with that. All Christians have authority to do spiritual harm, to pray for God's judgment and justice on those who do the things that are wrong. We all have that ability and that right and that responsibility and that necessity, I would say. We not only can do it, we should do it. When we know something is wrong, when we know something is bad, I'm not saying, you know, just... Maybe, possibly, I think. No, when we see someone and we know it's wrong, we are when we have no doubt in in our minds that it is wrong. Yeah, pray for God to stop that person. Sometimes, by any means necessary, and if something happens to them, it's not again breaking their arms or something horrible happening to them physically. That doesn't drive the sin out. We want their sin stopped. The preferable, and if that means a temporary, you know being put down, and I don't mean death or anything, but just being stopped from what they're doing by some circumstance of life, it'll be a good chance for them to stop and reflect and hopefully repent of their sins. A lot of people become Christians when they're on the downside, when things are, when things are not going well, when their sin has caught up to them. So with that in mind and wanting other people to come to repentance as well, yeah, when we see someone doing something wrong, 
you know, if it's within our power, within our ability, we should tell them, we should warn them and say, you know what, that's not good. That's a bad idea. And we should also pray for them, for their repentance, for their turning to Jesus, and for God to stop their sin. You know, be it be it just, you know, a, a friend or a colleague at work, or even even being a politician who is a leader of your people. Pray for you you're supposed to pray for your leaders anyway, you're supposed to pray for your nation. Um the first thing we're told to pray for, it's in, I think, 2 Timothy, where Paul tells Timothy to pray for the leaders of the nation to pray for peace. Because when your nation's at peace, you're at peace. And that reminds me of a verse in Proverbs, where Solomon said, When the wicked rule, the land is troubled. But when the righteous rule, the land has peace. And sometimes what's necessary is judgment. So again, no, don't do anything physical. That's not within your power, unless, again, you're an officer or someone in the military, someone of that caliber. Otherwise, don't do anything physical. It's not your responsibility, and you shouldn't do it. You should, however, pray to your God for him to stop whatever's going on. And, when it, and it is within your power to speak and say, that's wrong, stop it. By all means, do that. But even more than that, even more than that, pray. God hears prayer. God answers prayer. So hopefully I was very clear on this subject. Uh, it's not something I hear a lot of people talk about, but I don't see why not. It's right there in the Word of God. And if it's in there, it should be talked about, even if it's not quite uh, you know, culturally acceptable or politically correct. It's just so we talked about because God is God. His truth is the truth. It's timeless. And it applies to all people of all nations for all time. And it needs to be talked about. So I've talked about it. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you and God bless.